Praise be to Jesus Christ and welcome to Catholic Forum. I'm your host, Deacon Jim Thorndell. I'd like to welcome all those who join us on public TV and those who might be hearing us on podcast. First of all, I want to thank you all for welcoming us into your home, into or your car, wherever you may be listening to us. It's always our privilege to really help to extend the understanding of our Catholic faith. And you know, when we're on this journey, many times we realize, we, we seem to think that everybody was born Catholic, but you know, that's just not the case. Many people have had a conversion to the Catholic Church, and sometimes they're challenged into that conversion by other people in their lives. It's, it's a walk of faith many times for them, and it's a beautiful understanding of being open to the Holy Spirit and really letting yourself be led by God into this marvelous thing we call the Catholic Church. Today, I have with me a man who's been on that journey. His name is John Adkins. John, it's nice to have you here. Thank you, Deacon Jim. Thank you for being here. You know, uh, now, John, you're a married man, uh, three children, correct? Yes, sir. Wonderful. How long have you been in the Catholic Church, John? About nine years now. About nine years. You know, I, I know the people are going to want to hear how you started into this journey, but I think it's very important right now that we kind of establish where you came from. Okay. And, uh, you know, in, in order to have us to have an understanding, many of us are cradle Catholics and we don't know that journey. So to hear from you would really speak volumes about how we have to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. So tell us, uh, would you not, were you, were, you, were you practicing any faith early in your life? Um, when I was a kid, I was jumping around from church to church because my family didn't really attend church. Okay. Um, my grandfather was an actual um, preacher. Really? In a Baptist faith, yes, and in a Southern Baptist faith. Um, and they can preach. Oh, and, and he sure and they did. they can preach. Um, so they kept telling me that um, that was going to be my calling. Okay. So um, I always listened to stories by him. And sure. when he passed away, um, I was real young at the time. Okay. So I kept going to find in any church I could go to with friends. and Because I kn always knew I believed in God yeah. and okay. believed in the church and yeah. wanted to be in a church a sense of belonging. So sure. um, I bounced around from church to church as a kid, um, got baptized that way and just, you know, kind of floundered around. Looking back, do you think your father or your grandfather was one of the more influential people in your life during that time? Yes, he was. Okay. Okay. And you probably heard a lot about Jesus and about God. I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, and it was, it was really good because I tried, you know, I got, took my little brother. Um, I got a, a younger brother, a younger sister, and an older sister. Okay. Well, the older sister was off doing her own thing, and I always drug the two little ones with me to church. Mom worked a lot, so... Um, your, your reward will be great in heaven for that. I well, mean, that's, that's important I believe you did so. that. So I was kind of dragging them to the church to church and started jumping around. Um, we moved from the south up here okay. to Michigan. Whereabouts in the south? At Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Okay. Yes, sir. And so we ended up... I started going to different churches um, later on in life. Um, met the lady that's my beautiful wife now. Um, she was cradle Catholic, okay. and um, she asked me to go to church with her a few times. Let me ask you this. On this journey, you're with your brothers. Um, you're going to all different denominations, correct? Correct. Were you hearing things differently, though? Were you starting to grow a little bit in your understanding of different denominations and, and different faith I, churches? I did. Most of it was I kind of went into the church eyes wide open, okay. um, looking to grab a hold of anything okay. and anybody and anybody that would take any time to talk to me about it, yeah. about their faith. And because I, I felt the sense of calling to God, okay. I just didn't know how to get there. Okay. So in all the different churches I went to, I felt the presence of God, but it didn't really quite feel like home okay. because, you know, at the time I really didn't quite understand, especially as a smaller child. I really didn't quite understand what it all meant, but yeah. I felt the sense of calling and him calling me to the church. Yeah. You know, and most children in the younger ages have a, a pretty good understanding of the New Testament. I mean, they've read the New Testament, but it's the Old Testament that comes alive through the New Testament, and that's really where the learning starts to come in, this journey into our faith, because it's the Old Testament that, that brings the church alive in many areas, too, in that, in that journey you're on. Mm -hmm. So you're, 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 you, what, you were Baptist, did you go to the Methodist? Uh, I, yep, I did actually. Um, Lutheran? When I, when I got older, um, I actually tried a Protestant church. 
um, Methodist church, okay. um, Baptist church. Um, I was going to pretty much anything I could that I kind of felt comfortable with. Okay. Um, since I most of the churches as a kid I went to was a Baptist church. Okay. So that's what I kept getting drawn back to because I thought that's sure. where I, I that, belong. That was home. Yes. And um, like I said, once I met my wife, um, at the, before she was my wife, um, she asked me to go to church with her once just to see the difference on the church that I was going to. Yeah. And um, she said she would go to church with me if I went to church with her. And Seems like a fair trade. I thought so. <laughs> and it was so confusing to me. Yeah. Um, I had 50 million questions afterwards. And um, after I went to a mass with her, I gave her such a migraine on 50 million questions and trying to, you know, go against everything that I was kind of taught, so to speak, yeah. in, in the other church or what I thought I knew. Let's put it that well, way. Let's... Um, kind of clarify that for, for the viewers and the listeners. I, you know, and, and, and God bless all our Protestant and Baptist brothers and sisters. They're, they love the Lord, and, and I'm so thankful for them. But I, I know in many times that um, there's a misunderstanding about the Catholic faith in, in many of the Protestant and Baptist denominations, particularly when it comes to statues and the Eucharist and mm -hmm. the crucifix and all those and the, and the, and the um, incensing and the bells and the smells. They, 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 right. they can't quite put that together many times. And that's probably, your, it's probably the same stumbling block you were having. It was. Um, actually, um, the communion part of it for me, I struggled with. Yeah. Um, all the other churches I went to, it, it didn't matter how long you have attended those churches or whatever. Right. Those were, I mean, you just, you took communion just like everybody else when they right. did it. And the only thing they would say to you at that point would be, you know, it's up to you to decide whether, you know, it was okay for you to take it or not. Right. Um, and of course, um, reconciliation and all the other stuff, I kind of really struggled with a little bit. Sure. Um, had many, many questions about all of that. Um, and it wasn't, it was just because I didn't know what that stuff was. So the lack of information on yeah, it, sure. the knowledge of it just really baffled me. And because I tried to argue it because I didn't understand it. Yeah. The more I, I argued the fact um, with my wife and my mother-in-law, then they, as I started researching it, I started learning more about it. So I basically was teaching, they were forcing me to teach myself yeah. what the Catholic faith was, what saints mean, um, reconciliation, just everything that I thought I knew about the Catholic faith. Yeah. The more I thought I knew, the more they showed me, I, the less I knew. Yeah, exactly. And so exactly. it was wonderful. And, and, and a wonderful teach what a wonderful teach experience because you were really challenged into the faith. And yes. you and you were challenging back, I'm sure, to, I was. to to make sure that you were right. I was. And it's that that's a continual going back and forth is really helps us to grow in this knowledge. You know, as you're as you're um, uh, growing in your faith, or I should say you're 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 making this leap of faith. Um, I, I understand you, you had a very strong Catholic wife. You have a ca strong Catholic wife. And Correct. Tell us about your mother-in-law. Okay, she is an ex-nut. Okay. Um, was in the con, was a uh, nun for 10 years. Okay. Said she got a calling. She, uh, God spoke to her, okay. told her to leave the convent, to get married, and have four children, and raise four children okay. in a Catholic church. And I want to clarify this for uh, the people who are listening and viewing. Nuns are they, they dedicate themselves to the Lord, but they're they're and they can be consecrated or they can they're, they're, they come in there and they can make a commitment, but they're not ordained. So in other words, um, the bishop, the priest, and myself, a deacon are ordained. Right. So we can't leave in that respect. Right. But yes, nuns are free to leave at at some time if they so if they if they find out the calling is no longer there. So I want to make that clear to our their viewers that um, that's absolutely uh, proper in, in that respect. Okay. So um, as I started going to church with my wife more, um, and so I was like, okay. So I kept going to church with her. Um, the more I did it, it was more at first I was doing it out of rebellion to say, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to watch and I'm going to see what happens. And then we're going to, you know, battle, debate this we're gonna back and forth. We're going to do that tangle forth. again. And it really was. <laughs> and um, my mother-in-law, God love this woman. She's the truly blessed by God because the more I spoke to her, the more I pushed her and tried to get her to debate the faith with me to try to, so to speak, debunk the faith. Right. Um, she basically didn't argue it. She said, okay, this is what we believe. Um, I'm not, I can't tell you what you're to believe, 
but this is what we believe, this is why. And so, and then she would just leave it at that. She would not argue it with me at all. She was straight forward. This is what we believe. This is why we believe it. And that was it. So the more that, that, that really got to me because at that point I was bound to determine to prove her wrong. So I actually went on more of a journey in my faith at that point sure. without even realizing it because I started researching it just to try to debate what she said. Um, I said, because if everything that you see, there's always something that you can always argue the opposite of. So the more I actually argued with her and then the more I researched it, before I even realized what she had done to me, I was so deep into the Catholic faith, I was gone. I was, I had fell in love with the faith. Um, I knew that's where I was at home. Yep. I felt like I was, when I walked into the, the Catholic church, I felt like I was home. Did you feel that you were getting the answers that you were looking for? Um, I do. Okay. Um, and, I, I'm sure on the journey you didn't. But at the you, time, I didn't think I did. Right. At, as, as I was going through it, I didn't think I was. Yeah. Um, but as I look back onto it now, um, with eyes wide open now, exactly. and I see the fact that um, the answers that I was searching, I was getting. Yeah. But... I was getting them because she was having me research it. So I was looking up the answers I was actually looking for. Right. You're and answering your own questions. And I really was. And that's exactly what she did. And sure. like I said, for I, it was a good four or five years yeah. um, or more. Praise with, be to God for her. That, that's it really was. Challenge. And the only thing she would tell me is if you don't like the answers I give, I'm giving you, well, we'll set up a meeting with, with the priest and let you have the conversation with them and ask sure. him the questions that you need to be answered. If I'm not answering them to your yeah. you know, to your liking. You know, when I, when, I, when I think about a journey like yours, I know that I've, I've talked to many of my uh, non-Catholic brothers and sisters, and there's always some particular, um, there's some two or three that are really persistent in, in their in refusal to really look at the Catholic Church. One, obviously, is the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is the Blessed Mother. Yes. And a third one really is the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Which we call, you know, um, going to being absolved of your sins. I would imagine. Tell me about your first experience with the reconciliation, and how did you feel about that prior to it? Um, I was scared to death. Um, didn't have a lot of experience with that, with the faith that I was in. Yeah. There was nothing like that. Um, Let me ask you this: How did you reconcile prior to the Catholic Church? Really, I didn't. Um, I thought I was doing it through prayer. By praying, I thought that's what I was doing okay. by, by praying. Okay. Um, that, that's about the best knowledge I had of it because okay. jumping from all these different churches and not really sticking to one and not really anybody giving me the answers that I was really looking for right. and what I was searching for. So when it came to reconciliation, um, it was an eye-opener for me. Yeah. Um, I was scared to death. I was open to it. Um, but I think back now, and I'm like, I don't know why I was so scared of that. Yeah. Um, cause it was when, really a beautiful time. And when it happened, when it actually, when I went through my conversion, I think my whole journey through this, the whole process, when I walked out of the confessional, I felt like I was floating on air, and I felt like God was actually carrying me, yeah. had his arms wrapped around me, and I was like, why was I so scared of this? Yeah. Why did I wait so long to do this? You know, and I, and I try and tell my, my non-Catholic brothers and sisters in a, in a, you know, in a sensitive way is that the priest is, is not the one forgiving. He Correct. sits in persona of Christ. And because by the commissioning of Jesus, when he, when he uh, after he rose and was the apostles, he was saying, whatever sins you forgive or forgive, whatever sins you retain or retain, he was giving them that beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. And there's this profound understanding that, you know, we, we do through the priest who sits in persona of Christ, we are absolved of our sins through that power of his ordination. And like you say, you feel like you're floating on air. You come out with this beautiful sense of feeling of the grace that you've been given and this freedom. Yeah, that was, I've got an older sister that's um, not real into faith of any kind, so to speak. Um, and I did have a, a, like you said, a debate with her. Um, it's not really wasn't a debate either because um, her lack of knowledge mm -hmm. was, you know, when we go to reconciliation, we're confessing to the priest. Yeah. in which we are to him, but he is the beacon to God. Right. He is the go-between. Um, and that's where, you know, we finally had the conversation that I'm not 
praying for him and he's not giving me forgiveness. Right. You know, he is the beacon of God, you know, and we're going, we're using him as the tool to get to him and he's resolving back. And it's by the power of his ordination that he sits in persona. In other words, you're confessing to Christ. Yes. Because he's, he's sitting in place of Christ until he returns. And so it's a, it's a beautiful understanding of if, if we feel that Christ can rise from the dead and, and he's with us, then why can't we feel he's in that, that sacrament of reconciliation right there with us, right. forgiving our sins, yeah. if we ask for him and we confess our sins to one another? That is true. Yes. I, that is, that's a great thing to have. Yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. It really is. And, and, and most uh, converts tell me the same story, is that they, they absolutely came out of there with an assurance of forgiveness. Oh, that's what it was? Yeah. Well, I was actually, um, I was more, I was scared more than most people, I huh. guess, going into it. Um, I had, uh, my wife got worked up one day when she was a little bit younger, when we first started dating and stuff. She actually got so worked up going into confessional that she got so worked up, she passed out. Oh, my. So I heard the story of that and everything else. So I really got myself so worked up that, <laughs> oh, Lord, God, you know, I mean, you passed out in there. It's like, oh, Lord, what, you know, yeah. I'm... You know, here I'm coming into this, and I'm just like, oh, God, if you passed out, and you are a cradle Catholic and gone through this your whole life, Lord, hold the roof down, yeah. because when I walk in, God only knows what's going to happen at this <laughs> point. I'm like, oh, Lord, I know I've done a whole lot worse than you ever could have done. And it sounds like you had a very merciful and kind priest. For your first uh, I really did. Um, was very nurturing and yeah. um, patient and kind. And walked you through it. Yeah, he walked me from, from the time I walked into there because I was so nervous. Yeah. And I had my notes in front of me and of my course. little cards and, uh, and went through it that way. And he was actually really, really gracious about the whole thing. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? And when I left there, um, it was actually the sense of feeling of everything, uh, just the calmness and the peacefulness all the way around. You know, we've, we've worked a little bit through reconciliation. Uh, how was it with the Blessed Mother? When you, when we, you know, the Catholics look at her as a Theotokos, the mother of God. Mm -hmm. And so we're, and most non Catholics think we pray to Mary. Well, that's not true. Right. We pray with Mary for yes. her intercessory power. Yes. Did, did you have a stumbling block with Mary at first? Um, to be honest with you, not really. Mm -hmm. um, I knew who she was and the significance to with her. But like I said, coming from the other faith, and since I was bouncing around from all different ages to all these different churches, yeah. that it, um, there wasn't a whole great big lack of knowledge of okay. that. Yeah. So with her, it was, it just came natural to me. Yeah. It, that was just something that I just took up naturally, it seemed like. that it wasn't that I, you know, I didn't have a problem saying that we were praying to her. So then we come down to the Eucharist. <laughs> the Eucharist, because that is one that's probably the most mysterious to most non-Catholics. Um, it could almost seem like idolatry to some non-Catholics. Um, how did you reconcile with that? Um, honestly, when going to the other places and doing it, going through the, the ceremony of it, right. um, okay, I kind of, at that point, it's like, okay, this is just something that we're doing and just do it. And there really wasn't a whole lot of meaning. I mean, you're right. talking the body and the blood and everything else. And so they're really, the meaning behind it, I didn't quite understand it, I don't think, at that time. Right. So it didn't really set in exactly the importance of it and really what it meant. And um, going through our CIA and everything else and really learning and understanding what it was. You know, I was upset at first for a long time because I thought, well, you know, I believe in God. I can take communion, exactly. the Eucharist, at any other church that I've gone to, I've taken it. So why can't I hear? And, and it was something that I struggled with in that aspect of it. And I think you hit the nail on the head with the word. You see, many churches have communion. We're not a communion church. We're a Eucharistic church. Right. And that, that word alone makes a difference because we truly believe it to be the body and blood of Christ from the sacramental nature from yes. the Last Supper. And so, and by the power of the ordination of the priest, passing it on to Peter and the apostolic accession to the priest, we bring that sacrament, we bring that sacrament alive every Sunday at the altar. Right. And it truly is the body and blood of Christ, which I know you've learned and, and come to appreciate. I really have. It's been, um, I actually got into it so much that that was one of the first things I really wanted to learn about how to be a Eucharistic minister and all of that. And because 
I mean, I was just enthralled with that whole process yeah. and what it meant and the significance behind it and the ritual, why we do it and what it is and what it really means. Yeah. And that was the biggest one. Once I actually learned what it really meant and the significance of it, I mean, there was no turning back at that point. It becomes the source and the summit of our faith. It was. It, it was the fu food yeah. to my soul. That's it. Food for the journey. It's the manna from heaven. He kept me going and quite he, a bit. And, he, and it keeps us both going. <laughs> hey, right. It keeps all of us going, right? <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the absolute essential for, for our life as Catholics that uh, we uh, not, not only reverence the Eucharist, but that we receive it worthily. And, right. and, that, and that is the, really the key, that we receive it wordly. And it's not we're trying to deny our, our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, but there is a separation. And until they have the profound understanding of what they're receiving, and until they come in full communion with the Catholic Church, it's not we're trying to deny them that grace, it's just that they have to be prepared. Right. And, and it's really an, it's an obligation as Catholics to fulfill that. Right. And, uh, and I, I pray that we have more people who can understand that, that uh, it's not a denial. It's rather, it's rather merciful to say you're not ready to receive this because you, you really don't have the understanding of what it is. Right. And you've come to that understanding now, I'm sure. Yes, the, the sacrament of the Eucharist is, is something that, uh, it was a hard pill to swallow at first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it really was. And that was one of the things I really argued about. And, um, and it's always... You know, like you always. But you, you argued not out of ignorance. You argued out of not being told. Correct. Well, I was kind of being told, but I didn't want to hear it. Yeah. I, at that point, I wasn't actually listening to what I was being told. Okay. Um, you know, they were saying, okay, it's a sacrament. Well, stand in line, brother. Yeah, it was, you know, it's a sacrament, and there's a reason, you know, that you you have to wait to do it. Right. And, and I was like, why? And once, you know. I started actually learning and researching it and talking to the priest at the time and actually started going through RCIA, yeah. really learning about what it really was and what it meant. Then, you know, I, at that point, I, kept, Isn't that wonderful? I stopped arguing and it, it like hit me right in the face. Now, how long have you been uh, in the church? Um, about nine years now. Okay. And you had a friend of yours, I know, who was uh, part of your RCIA what was his name again? Randy Wisdom. Randy. Um, and he was, uh, was he instrumental in helping you come into the church? Um, I'd been going to the church with my wife for several years before okay. I went. Um, okay. And uh, Randy Wisdom's wife, Molly Wisdom, is in charge of the RCIA. Okay. Um, and I'd known her because she took over the position in the church that my mother-in-law used to hold. So I met her a long time ago, and I'd kind of talked to her a little bit here and there. Um, but when I, was, when I was ready to take that leap of faith and that journey, I, um, I ran straight to her, and she was really instrumental. And once I actually got into the class with RCIA, I, that's when I got to know Randy. Wonderful. And, um, you know, a lot of same interest and everything yeah. else, and just a really awesome guy. Um, very helpful and instrumental in a lot of ways. You know, John, um, I, I give you all the credit in the world because um, you really have walked by faith on this because God kept drawing you into this, this Catholic Church. And you had all the full powers to say no, but you persisted in even the, the struggles and in the challenges. You, you, there was something within you that wanted to know more, and I, and I give you a lot of credit for that. But you're unique also because you not only accepted the faith, but now you're involved in it, correct? Uh, yes. I mean, you've kind of taken a lead role in this whole thing, too. Yeah, actually, um, at the time, uh, after a couple of years of getting confirmed, um, I was still really thirsty for knowledge, and I wanted to know more. Okay. Um, the classes, when you go through them and everything that you do, I mean, you take up so much because, I mean, you don't really understand what you're, of everything that's going on. Exactly. So until after I went through it, started living the faith. Um, so then I got it, that's when I got wrapped up and I asked if I could sit back into the RCIA program instead of going to the adult classes because I wanted to see what I would get out of it a second time okay. because I knew I would get something different because I was in a different spot sure. in the journey at, my, at that time. Um, so I just kind of wanted to learn more. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit continues to open us up. Yes, and it was, really was. Yeah. And so when I ended up going back to the class, I did it for um, almost a little a little over half of the, of the class for okay. RCA. Then the next year I sat in with them again, and then finally they were like, he's not going away. We might as well just bring <laughs> him in as part of the team. And um, 
um, with Randy Wisdom's help, um, really mentoring me into the program to really kind of give back to others what was given to me yeah. and, and the joy to see, you know, the, the transformations in the journeys of the people in the class as long with ours. How many Johns have crossed your path? <laughs> right, uh, in the class. In that same resistance, maybe. Uh, actually, in the class, there's been a couple. Yeah? Yeah. The, the, but most of them, you know, I like to think I'm unique and, <laughs> and yeah. different in all the ways, but not too many Johns have come through our classes, but they... Um, did, your, did your mother's law, your mother-in-law's approach to you help you to answer a lot of questions by them sometimes, by challenging them to make them read and, and dig into their... Yes, a lot of the classes is set for them to do, for us to basically kind of guide the conversation, yeah. but let them live the conversation yeah. and work it out through the conversations that way and through their life experiences and then with the faith, give them the knowledge of it and then try to put the two together um, to marry it together. And it really, and it does help because the way exactly. I was taught, because I wasn't cradle Catholic and since basically and that's what we encourage them is to continuously research this, look yeah. into it. Don't ever stop trying to learn. That's right. Um, because you're never going to stop learning. There's well, it's like the old adage, faith is not caught, it's taught. That, and it really is an understanding that in order for people to really gravitate and have an understanding of the Catholic faith, there has to be a foundation. And there has to be a, a, an understanding of where it comes from and the authority that it comes from. And once you start journeying into that authority of this apostolic succession and really Christ establishing this church and how he wanted it to be, sacramentally, um, led by his priests, um, the whole, holy orders, and all these different things that he's brought into fulfillment in our church, it becomes a clear understanding of who we are as Catholics and how we, and how we respond as Catholics. Yeah, I, that's well put, actually. It really does. And it takes all of us to, to help each other along and you know, stumble every now and then, just pick ourselves back up and continually trying to learn and to become a better Catholic. Exactly. You know, John, it's always interesting because uh, we as a cradle Catholic, and I was raised in a Catholic and a Greek Orthodox household, so I had, oh. I had two lungs of the same church. So <laughs> I, got a little, I got a lot of Catholicism, I got a lot of Orthodox in me also. But it's amazing that people, uh, and particularly you, John, that really were thirsting for God and, and not knowing um, where you were going on the journey, but you trusted him enough to walk with the Holy Spirit and let him lead you. And I, and I really I tip my hat to you because uh, it's a challenge, particularly in this day and age in this culture where the, where the culture is going to tell you you don't need it. Right. And you were, you were thirsting for that. Your, your family's all, all practicing Catholics now? Um, my You're, oldest son is not. Okay. Um, but my two, my middle son and my youngest son is, is definitely practicing. Wonderful. Well, we're going we're gonna to pray for all of your family members that uh, you just continue this journey with the Lord because, you know, we, we, we pray for our children. I always pray the Lord that through our prayers they can hang on to the helm of his garment until they really accept the true faith. And, right. and that is going to be my prayer for your family okay. also. Thank you. So it's been a joy to have you here. I, I love to hear these stories because, it, you know, we as cradle Catholics need to hear why we are in love with the church also. So, John, I thank you for being thank here. You, it's been a pleasure you. to have you here. And I want to thank all of our viewers. And I want to, as always, we give all praise to Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of our lives. And we bless, him in the name, we bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.